Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. beautiful day here in New York. It is much warmer today. The temperature will be in the high 60s. The breeze is not as cold or as strong as it has been in the two previous series games. And right down below us, two young right-handers are warming up. Bob Gibson, fire bowling right-hander, will be going for the Cardinals. And 22-year-old Mal Stottlemyre, who beat the Cardinals 8-3 to out at St. Louis. They complete their Root job for him will be pitching today for the Yankees. So this uh, is now game five. Let's recap. Remember the first game? The Cardinals won nine to five in St. Louis. The Yankees came back to win the second game eight to three. Saddlemire the winner, Gibson the loser in that game, and they're matched up here again today. Then the Yankees beat the Cardinals in the third game as the series moved to Yankee Stadium by a score of two to one. Boston, the winner in that one, Schultz the loser. Mantle hitting a homer in the ninth inning. And yesterday, Ken Boyer, the hero, along with two superb relief men, Roger Craig and Ron Taylor, as the Cardinals even the series of two games apiece, defeating the Yankees by a score of four to three. So game five today, we'll have an open day tomorrow, and game six, for sure, will be played in St. Louis on Wednesday afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, this program is authorized under broadcast rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience. And any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. All the batters of the Cardinals are moaning about the lighting here at Yankee Stadium. The brilliant sunshine, the batter in the shadows, especially as the game wears on. Dick Grote, Kurt Flood, young Mike Shannon, young McCarver, different Cardinal players that we talked to before the game, are complaining about the background. Of course, center field bleachers are full here during the series. The pitcher is just a silhouette, according to them, as that ball comes rocketing in out of the brilliant sunshine into the shadows. And as Dick Grote said, I admire these Yankee batters who have to play here the year round. I would think you might tack 15 or 20 points on their lifetime batting averages. This is a tough ballpark to hit in. Now let's take a look at the starting lineups. If you have your pencil and scorecard handy to go right along with us here on our NBC broadcast. For the visiting St. Louis Cardinals, leading off and playing center field will be Kurt Flood. Flood is in center field. Blue Brock. Brock in left field hitting second. Incidentally, those two fellows, uh, Flood had 211 hits during the regular season. Brock had 200 hits. They have not been on base too many times, though, so far in the first four games of the series. Flood is four out of 18. Brock is two out of 17. Bill White, who's had only one hit in 15 up, will be batting number three for the Cardinals. They're waiting for him to break out. He's hitting number three and playing first base, Bill White. The cleanup man is Ken Boyer. Boyer batting number four and playing third base for St. Louis. Dick Gross will be batting number five. He's made two brilliant stops at shortstop in the series. Gross at short, hitting fifth for the Cardinals. The catcher, batting number six for St. Louis, will be Tim McCarver. McCarver batting six. Mike Shannon will be playing right field and batting number seven for St. Louis. Shannon in right field. Dell Maxville is the second baseman. He's hitting number eight. Javier still has a bad hip, and it's been Maxwell most of the way for the Cardinals at second base, except when they pinch hit for him. And the pitcher is Bob Gibson. Bob Gibson for the Cardinals. Gibson, during the regular season, had an earned run average of 3.01. He 
He won 19 games, lost 12. He finished very strong in the month of September, and he was voted the outstanding National League player for the month of September. Now the lineup for the outstanding New York Yankees. Leading off and playing shortstop will be Phil Lynn. Lynn's at shortstop. Batting number two at second base, Monty Richardson. And Richardson uh, took the blame for the game yesterday. That's just like Richardson. He won't uh, throw much when he does something well, and he's the first one to pop in and take the blame if he messes something up in the field. Bobby Richardson at second. Roger Maris will be in center field, batting number three. Maris in center field. Hitting cleanup, and so far, the leading batter in the World Series, Mickey Mantle. He's hitting for an average of 429. Mantle is in center field, batting cleanup. Batting number five for the Yankees will be Elston Howard. Howard hitting fifth and catching for New York. Tommy Tresh will be playing left field for the Yankees. Tresh batting number six in left field. Joe Pepitone will be at first base. Pepitone is batting seven. Cletus Boyer. Boyer is hitting eight. And pitching for New York, batting ninth, will be 22-year-old Mel Stottlemyre. Whitey Ford was scheduled to pitch yesterday or today. He has a bruised heel that is giving him trouble when he strides and he's pitching today. And he was supposed to call the Yankees uh, from the bullpen phone if he was all right. He didn't call. And now there's beginning to become a doubt as to whether Ford is going to be available for any more pitching action in the series. So much, Kurt Gowdy. Hello again, everybody. A beautiful afternoon here at Yankee Stadium. Game number five. The World Series all tied up. Two games apiece. The action will switch to Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Regardless of the outcome of this one, the Cardinals guaranteed themselves a return to their home ballpark through their thrilling victory yesterday afternoon. What was hitless against Stottlemyre in St. Louis? The pitching pairings are the same, and this is the fifth game as they were for the second game. Stavelmeyer beat Gibson 8 to 3. Flood was hitless in that game, nothing out of four. He's hitting 222 for the World Series with four out of 18. He's driven in three runs, he has no homer. During the regular season, he had 211 hits as he batted 311. All set to go. The wind, what there is of it, is blowing towards left field today. Here's Mel Stavelmeyer ready for the first pitch of the ball game. Into the wind if he goes, and here it is. And it's a fastball roll, ball one. One ball and no strike. Vern Benson coaching at third base. Joe Schultz at first base for the Cardinals. Boyer playing a shallow at third base. Lins is deep shot stop. Richardson near the back at second. Pepitone at first. Here's the pitch. The curve is outside. Two balls, no strikes. Vinny Smith of the National League is the umpire behind the plate. Al Smith of the American League at first base. Frank Sicori of the National League at second base. Bill McKinney of the American League at third base. Down to left field line, Kenny Burkhardt. Here's ball three, low and inside. Kenny Burkhardt of the National League, the left field foul line up by and Hank Storer of the American League down to right field line. A beautiful afternoon. Kurt Flood leading it off. Three balls, no strike. Mel Stottlemyre will beat the Cardinals. Eight to three on a seven-hitter. Here's the pitch. Strike is called, a fastball. And Flood looks inquiringly at Vinny Smith. Steps out of the batter's box, takes a glance down at Vern Benson, the third base coach, who controls through re relay from manager Johnny Key whether to hit or take. And he takes, strike two. The count is full now. Three balls and two strikes. Stavelmeyer in his 8-3 to three victory in St. Louis walked only two men, fans four. Got in trouble in the last two innings, and that was all. Three balls, two strikes, the big pitch. Ball four, he walked him. Kurt Flood opens with a walk. That brings up Lou Brock. World Series. And the Cardinals are anxious to see him break out of it. That's Flood's first base off walls of the World Series. They're just checking. I believe it's the first time that the Cardinals leadoff man has been on base. There's a first pitch low. Snaps over to first the runner back. And it is the first time that the Cardinal leadoff man has opened the ball game by getting on base in this World Series. Rupert hitting only 118. No homers, three RBIs. Two hits and 17 times at bat. 
He was hit by something out of four against Stottlemyre the last time, but hit the ball hard three different times. Here's the pitch. Tried to hit the left and he missed. The count is even and a ball and a strike. A runner at first base, nobody out. The fifth game of the World Series has just started. Kurt Flood, open with a walk. Blue Brock, the batter, the count evened up at a ball and a strike. The defense straight away against Brock, who's a left-handed batter. Quick throw to first, the runner's back. Pepitone tosses the ball leisurely to Mal Stalemeyer. Blue Brock steps out of the batter's box and is looking down at third base coach Vern Benson. One ball, one strike. Now the sign given. There's the stretch by Stottlemyre. The pitch to Brock. It's a strike call. A half-speed pitch. Caught the outside corner. It's a belt. And it's two strikes and a ball. Stottlemyre, for a youngster only 22 years old, certainly has great pitching savvy out there. Wonderful boy. The youngest man in the World Series. Two strikes and a ball. There's the stretch. And now the pitch. Outside. That's an outside corner. And Brock is arguing about that one. and he didn't like it at all. Here is Bill White now. White's had only one hit. One out of 15 in the World Series. Batting .067. One of the powers of the Cardinal attack during the course of the season, especially the second half, when he was a red hot. Quick throw to first, the runner back. White, during the regular season, hit 21 homers and drove in 102 runs. Has no homers, no RBIs in this series. The stretch the pitch. He had a cut and he missed the low fastball. One strike and no more. Stottlemyre is a sinker ball right-hander. His fastball dips. Bill White is known as a real good fastball and low ball hitter. One strike, no ball. Time is called. Something got into White's eye. Bill is not anxious to get it out because he feels it might be a base hit. Wants to keep it. One strike and no ball. One out, one on. There's the stretch. From the belt. Here's the pitch. And it's in there for a strike call. That off-speed pitch of Stottlemyre. He's changing speed beautifully and earlier today than he did in the second game of the series. So he's ahead of Bill White with two strikes or nothing. One out, one at first base. Kenny Boyer, the hero of yesterday's victory, will be next. Now the stretch, and the pitch to White. He struck him out on a clear ball, and he made him look bad, as White missed a down-breaking curve ball and missed it badly. So that's two strikeouts in the inning, and here's Kenny Boyer. Boyer's had only two out of 15 in the World Series, but one of them turned the feet in the victory. Stottlemyre has just picked up his sixth strikeout of the World Series. Two in this inning. Here's Boyer waiting. Here's the stretch. And now the pitch. A bouncing ball towards short. Lynn's on the big hop. Flips the second for the fourth play. So Boyer, fourth plus. No hits, no runs, no errors. One left. At the middle of the first inning, the score. Single was nothing. Wait a minute now. Let's see. It's interference. Hold on. Interference has just been called. As Boyer swung, the catcher, Elston Howard, touched his bat. And the Yankees, on their way off the field, suddenly realize that this inning isn't over yet. Elston Howard tips Kenny Boyer's bat as he bounced out to Lynn. So that's a catcher's interference. And Boyer is safe at first base. And we are still in the first inning with Dick Grove coming up there. That was a rare one indeed, Kurt Gowdy. I haven't seen that in years in the American League during a regular season, Harry. I believe that uh, Howard will be charged with an error on this play. We'll have to check it. During the course of the regular season, it happened to the Cardinals several times, always to one man, Julian Javier. I think it happened to him three different times during the course of the National League season. Kenny Boyer in swinging. Elston Howard touched his bat for interference call. And the Yankees, like everybody else, was thought the top of the first inning was over, had a return to their position. As Boyer is at first, Flood is at second, two men are out, and here's Dick Grote up there. Grote, hitting 267, had a triple against Stoudemire. The 
last time he faced him. A rare play gives the Cardinals added life here, or new life, in the first inning. The stretch by Stoudemire, the pitch. One strike to no more. Stoudemire has a much better curveball going for him today, and he's using it considerably. It is an error on Elston Howard charge for the interference for giving Kenny Boyer a life. The official scores are Lou Hatter of the Baltimore Sun, Tommy Holmes of the New York Herald Tribune, and Jack Herman of the St. Louis Globe Democrat. No time at that is charged to Boyer. It's interference and an error on the catch. Now the pitch to Dick Grove. Curveball breaks outside and low. One ball, one strike. Well, the rarity in the World Series of a man reaching base on a strikeout and the Yankees utilizing that break to beat the Dodgers in a key ball game some years ago. One ball, one strike. Now the pitch. It's a fastball low. Two balls and a strike to Dick Gross. Cardinal shortstop. He had one out of three at triple against Donald Iron in St. Louis. Here's the announcement to the crowd. One strike. A murmur goes through the crowd. They probably have been inquiring of each other what in the world had happened. There's the stretch. And now the pitch. There's a foul ball up to the right. And the count is even up two balls, two strikes. Runners at first and second. Two out. Elston Howard goes out to talk to Mel Stottlemyre. Stottlemyre from Mapton, Washington, in the great Northwest. Was born in Hazleton, Missouri. A town of population of 10. Stottlemyre getting ready. 6'2", 180 pounds, just 22 years old. Runners at first and second, the 2-2 pitch. Here it is. Inside curve, ball three. And the count is full, and the runners will be going with the pitch. Three balls, two strikes, two out. Tim McCarver would be next. Dick Grote fell away from the curveball that time and it almost caught the inside corner. This is the automatic getting around here with two out, three balls, two strikes on the hitter. Foot off second, Boyer off first. They'll be going with the pitch. There's the stretch down to the belt. Here's the pitch. There they go. Ball four. The bases are loaded. The fastball dipped inside to Grote and he held up. So Tim McCarver steps up, and the base is loaded and two out. McCarver drove in a run against Stottlemyre in St. Louis. That's one out of four. Left-handed batter up there with the bases loaded. Two men No score in the fifth game of the World Series. We're in the top of the first inning. An inning marked by an interference call. A parent third out was thereby nullified. Here's Stoudemire's pitch to McCarver. It's a strike. A good fastball over the outside corner of Belmont. Mantle in deep right field. Maris in center. And left field is Tommy Tresh. Stoudemire getting ready. McCarver. One out of four against the last time. Batting 417 in the series. Here's a curveball and he chased it. A bad pitch. But he went after it. And he's in the hole two strikes or nothing. A curveball, breaking in on McCarver and low. He had committed himself and couldn't stop. Two strikes, no balls. Bases jammed, two out. Top of the first. No score. Stottlemyre, out in front of McCarver. Now the windup. Here's the pitch on the way. Outside curve, barely missed. A tantalizing pitch. A change. The just missed the strike zone. Beyond the knees. Boyer playing a very wide third base. But Carver quite frequently hits the ball on the third base line. Two strikes and a ball. Blood at third. Boyer at second. Grote at first. Mel Stadelmeyer takes a little too much time in the opinion of McCarver and Tim steps out of the batter's box. Battle of nerves here between pitcher and hitter. Two strikes and a ball. Here's the wind up and out of this. Left 
on base. And now, at the middle of the first inning, the score, St. Louis nothing, the Yankees nothing.
strikes down and breaks his bat as he bounces off the Cleve Boyer. That'll bring up Dow Maxville. He's two out of ten in the World Series. Playing every day, much to his surprise, pleasant surprise. Now the pitch. There's a line shot in the right center. That's the big hit. Mitchie Merrill cuts it off on one half. Maxville lines a single to right center. Well, the Cardinals have a runner at first with one out, and Bob Gibson, who batting against Stadelmeyer and St. Louis in the second game, have one out of two. A good hitter. Bob will be 29 years old in November. Product of Creighton University in Omaha. Fine athlete. One of the fastest runners on the Cardinal ball club. There's a stretch to pitch. He swings and he fouls it off, and down he goes and hurt him. He fouled that one off his ankle. Boy, that hurts. Trainer Bob Bowman of the Cardinals. Sprints gingerly to the field. And Gibson now, you know, Gibson broke his ankle two years ago. Hasn't uh, completely recovered from, from it yet from the standpoint of running speed. And uh, he broke his ankle, you know, in a very freakish manner while in the batting cage, swinging at a pitch just he did a moment ago. Twisted his ankle and broke it. And his broken ankle led to the Dodgers losing a pennant because Kurt Simmons moved into his pitching rotation and shut the Dodgers out on the final day of the season. Here's the pitch, it's a fastball high. That necessitated a playoff with the Giants, which the Giants subsequently won. One ball, one strike on Bob Gibson. Runner at first base. One out. We're in the second inning, no score. Al Stottlemyer gets set. Here's the pitch. He's pointing at a curve, and he missed it. And a good cut. It was a high curveball, and he missed it. Two strikes and a ball. The Yankee outfield plays straight away. Likewise, the infield. Bob Gibson, the hitter, Kirk Ford will be next. Stottlemyer gets set. Maxville, a lead off first base. Now the pitch. Curveball tap fouled on the third base line. Over near the Cardinal dugout. Two strikes and a ball. Cardinal. That boy, Bobby Baker, to cover that baseball. Cardinals have afforded their bat boy from St. Louis as a special reward for his season's efforts. Two strikes in the ball, the pitch. Foul the end. A rolling foul back to the screen. I see your eyebrows go up, Chris. <laughs> Can't help it, that's the boy's name. Trying to piece things together here. <laughs> Two strikes and a ball. One out, one on. Here's the pitch on the way. Curve inside. And that evens it up. Two balls, two strikes. Bob Gibson, the batter. Don Maxfield, the runner at first base. A beautiful afternoon at Yankee Stadium. Crowd about 67,000. Two balls, two strikes. Now Stottlemyre is at the belt. Here's the pitch. Bounce the ball again, and Kurt Flood grabbed that one. Two balls, two strikes. Well, Gibson is staying alive, making Stottlemyre work. Peppertone, the Yankee first baseman hoping to run around over there. Bob Gibson, a good hitting pitcher. Two balls, two strikes. Now Stottlemyer. There's the stretch to the pitch. He struck him out on a curveball. There is Stottlemyer's fourth strikeout. Wound up striking out the side in the first. Getting McCarver for the final out with the bases loaded. Now with two away, a runner at first base. Here's Kurt Luck. Right-handed batter walks his first time up. 
Saddleman has his glove on his knee, leaning forward at the moment. Now he's ready. Here's the fifth. A bouncing ball foul on the third base line. Burn Munson. Snaps that ball down. Coaching over there. Burn, of course, concerned about Mrs. Munson, who would have been here to see the World Series, but for an operation. Happy to report she's recovering nicely. There's the stretch. And the fifth. Ground ball is short. Lynn has got it over to second base to Richardson for the fourth time. One hit, no run, no errors, one left. At the middle of the second inning, the score. St. Louis nothing, Yankees nothing. We go to the bottom half of the second inning. No score. And this is the fifth game of the 1964 World Series. Mickey Mantle. Leading hitter of the series, batting 429. With one home run, that one of August. Driven in four runs. That's six out of 14. Here's the pitch by Gibson. The curveball is low. Against Gibson. It's St. Louis. Mantle was hitless. Nothing out of three. Quick hitter batting left-handed. There's a wind and out of pitch. Fastball is low. Two balls, no strike. Cardinals have had one hit. Single by John Maxwell. The Yankees have had one hit. Single by Bobby Richards. Now the wind, and here's the fifth. A fastball is low for ball three. Elton Howard will be next. Three balls, no strike. Against Gibson in St. Louis, the Yankees scored their first run of the fourth. Here's the pitch, and it's ball four high. And a walk on four pitches. Ball. Here's Elston Howard, batting 385 in the World Series. No homers, one run batted in. He had one out of four against Gibson in St. Louis. Now the stretch. The pitch. It's a strike at the knees, a fastball. One strike and no ball. Handle in spite of these. Injuries is still faster than average. One strike, no ball. There's the pitch. High inside. And it hit him. Howard is hit by the pitch ball. Just barely kicked him. So the Yankees now have a good chance here in the second inning. Runners at first and second and nobody out, and Joe Pimpicon is the hitter. Let's see how the Yankees play. One of the power left-hand hitters up. Runners at first and second, nobody out. Up a total of two out of 14 in the World Series. They stretch the fifth. Fast ball a little bit low. That ball, no strike. Up a total has driven in one run. No homers, hitting 143. Gibson and St. Louis, Pepitone had a double. There's the stretch. Now the pitch. High pop foul, out of play. Into the stands on the third base side. Now bouncing back downstairs. And boy, a football tunnel down there. As they scramble for the souvenir. One ball, one strike on Pepitone. by Gibson. From the belt to pitch. A bouncing ball. Slowly hit. The only play will be first base and Gibson takes the bear himself. Pepitone caught the ball. Bob Gibson coming off the mound to his left on the run. Grabs the ball near the first base line and just kept on running for the foot out. Well, that breaks up Tom Fresh. The runners in second and third and only one out. And they have a base to put him on if they want to. See, they are going to watch it. Intentional pass will bring up Cleet Boyer with the bases loaded and one out. Well, Tommy Trash is being intentionally passed. Boyer in St. Louis drove in the first run of the ball game against Gibson with a sacrifice fly. In a 
similar situation, only it was in the fourth inning. With runners in second and third, Tresh was intentionally past them as he is now. It brought up Boyer, who hit a sacrifice fly. For the first runoff, Gibson tying up the ball. Boyer on a high curveball. Boyer swung out and missed. 
Now he's way ahead of Stottlemyre. Two strikes and a ball. Here's the windup. Here's the pitch. Curveball and he struck him out. Of the second inning, the score. St. Louis nothing, New York nothing. This is Harry Carey with Kirk Gowdy. Yankee Stadium. Lou Brock, the batter. One strike, the county bunt. Pass the mound. Here's a play at first base. Peek out. Nice play by Pepico, who grabbed the bunt and tagged them all in the same motion. Good play by Joe Pepico. As Brock tried to drag one past the mound, but got a little bit too close to the first baseman, who grabbed it and tagged them all in the same motion. One out. Now Brock continues to have trouble in his World Series. He's had only two out of 19. Here's Bill White. One out of 16. One out and nobody on base. The pitch. White has a cut, but he misses a curveball. One strike, no ball. One out, nobody on base. Nothing, nothing. Al Stottlemyre delivers. There's a high fly ball. Deep to right, but Mantle is there. He's under the ball. He'll get it. And he does. Right fly deep to Mantle and right. Yesterday, that ball might have gone out with the wind blowing out that way, but not today. Here's Kenny Boyer. He was safe on a catcher's interference call in the first inning. That's not ruled any time at bat, so he's nothing out of nothing here. Two men out, nobody on base. And this one is Gibson against Stottlemyre. Here's a pitch on the way to Boyer. Got curveball low. One ball, no strike. Two out, nobody on base. We're in the third. World Series tied up two games apiece. Now the pitch swung on a hot shot. Great play by Cleet Boyer. The peg, he's out, sensational play. One, two, three, nothing across. At the middle of the third inning, the score remains. St. Louis nothing, New York nothing. Great ball game underway here. Nothing, nothing, we go into the bottom half of the third. The Yankees at the top of the batting order with two men. The lead it off. First fan, first time at bat. Bob Gibson getting ready. Into the windup and out of the pit. Lynn takes the strike call at the knee. No brotherly love on that last play to end the Cardinal top of the third. And Cletus Boyer made a sparkling backhanded stop. Brother Kenny bid for a double and threw him out. Pitch to Lynn to strike. A slider caught the outside corner. Both pitches have been in a jam today, and both have gone to their strikeout pitch to get out of it. Stottlemyer fanning McCarver with the bases loaded in the first. Gibson fanning both Clay Boyer and Stottlemyer with the bases loaded in the second. Here's the ground ball hit the gross. He's got it. There's a peg to first. Easy out. Wins is thrown out by Dick Gross. One away. Here's Bobby Richardson. The hitting of the ball to hit it. Seven hits in his world. The game continues at the beginning of side two after a shot. Here's Bobby Richardson, the hitting of the ball to hit it. Seven hits in this World Series.
You can see why when you look at the composite figures. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside. Cardinals have scored 17 runs in the first four games, and the Yankees have made 18 runs. Cardinals 31 hits, the Yankees 35. Here's the pitch on the way to Mars. Fastball outside again. Two balls, no strike. Two men out, nobody on base. Nicky Mantle would be next. Roger Maris, the hitter. Bob Gibson is dead. The wind-up now, the pitch is on the way. A high fly ball, deep left center field, way back is Brock. He's under it now, he's waiting. He takes it. Maris fly deep to Brock and left center. Nothing across for the Yankees in the third. And at the end of the third inning, the score remains. St. Louis nothing, New York nothing. Nothing. Dick Rose will lead it off for the Cardinals to the fourth. He walked his first time up. Stavelmeyer's allowed one hit. Gibson's allowed one hit. One error has been charged. That on a interference call. Charged to Elston Howard. Who took Kenny Boyer's bat. Neighboring Boyer to first base. Here's Gross. Donnelmeyer waiting. The wind up now, the pitch on the way. Unfortunately, we are missing the audio for the first three batters in the top of the fourth. Dick Grote, Grant, Tim McCarver bounced back to the mound, and Mike Shannon flied to deep center field. We continue with Mickey Mantle batting in the last of the fourth. Mr. Mantle, fast ball rolling away. That even threw up the ball on the strike. Mantle walked his first time up against Gibson. Was hit up against him in St. Louis. Both for three. One ball, one strike. Here's Gibson winding. The pitch is on the way. And it's high. Ball two. The Memorial plaques out there. Great Yankees of the past in memory. Closest to Roger Maris that time. As he went right to the base of those plaques. Here's a strike off. Dave Ruth, Lou Gary, Billy Huggins. Two balls, two strikes. Mantle waiting. Bob Gibson getting set. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Here's the fifth. He had a home run cut and he fouled him. Well, you can see Kurt White, this fella hits the ball for tape measure home runs. He really takes a cut and he's so powerfully built. You look at that uh, bull neck he has, Harry, and those powerful shoulders, that upper torso. Tremendous power. Two balls, two strikes. The left-handed batter waiting. Bob Gibson winds. Here's the pitch. He struck him out. Mickey Mantle goes down swinging. And that's for Gibson, his strikeout number four. Second game of the series against the Yankees. Gibson playing nine in eight innings. By this point of the game, he already had seven strikeouts. Today he's got four. With one out here on the fourth, here's Elston Howard. Curveball going away. One ball, no strike. One out, nobody on. Last of the fourth inning, no score. A great one today, fans. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to Bill White. He's got it. Waves Gibson away and steps on the bag for the out. Howard hit that ball at the end of the bat, may have broken his bat on it. Two men up, two men down, and here's Joe Pepitone. He tapped out to Gibson his first time up. He's had two out of 15 in the World Series. The World Series has been tough on the first base. Pepitone with two out of 15, Bill White with one out of 17. Here's the pitch on the way. Swung foul back out of play. One strike and no ball. Two men out, nobody on base. Last to the fourth. He's in the Cardinals. Bob Gibson getting set. Here's the pitch on the way. He swings, misses the fastball. Got around late on it. Two strikes and nothing. Uh, Joe Pepitone. Sledge 
shades them towards right field. They give him a lot of room and let center. Two strikes and nothing. Now the wind, here's the pitch. Just barely misses the fastball. In fact, Gibson thought he caught the cut. Two strikes and a ball. Two men out. Last of the fourth. Gibson's pitch. And here it is. Swung on and drilled. Fouls on the first base line. Foul by inches. First baseman, first base umpire, Al Smith, right in line with a drive. Perfect position to call it. And so it's two strikes and a ball, two outs, with cut the phone to bat. Rob Gibson getting set. A wind up now, here's the pitch. Slow ball swung on, and there's a drive down the right field line, twisting into foul territory and out of play. That was the first changeup that Gibson has thrown. Two strikes and a ball, two outs. Joe Peppertone, the hitter. Gibson getting ready. Now to wind up the pitch to the left-hand batter. There's a high pop foul outside third over here in the stands. Boyer chasing it. Grove chasing it. No play. Another souvenir. Pepitone, during the regular season, hit 28 homers and drove in an even 100 runs as he batted 251. to the ball. McCarver out talking to his pitcher. Gibson for a pitcher with as much stuff as he has. Was cut for a number of home runs during the regular season. He allowed 25 in fact. Two strikes to the ball. Here's the pitch. High fastball outside. And that evens it up to two and two. Tom Tresh would be next. Peppertone about it. No score in the bottom of the fourth. Peppertone goes down swinging. Nothing across for the Yankees. And at the end of the fourth inning, the score remains. St. Louis nothing, New York nothing. Now has five strikeouts. Here's Gibson getting a good hand from the crowd as he steps up. He fanned his first time at bat. Right hand is on it. Nothing, nothing. We're in the top of the fifth. The pitch to Gibson, he swings and he misses. One strike and no ball. One man out. Nobody on base. Top of the fifth. Donald Myers pitch to Gibson. There's a high pop fly. Short left field. Fresh coming in fast. Way fast. Still coming. Can't make the play. Gibson falls down between first and second. Returns to first base. Gibson would have made second easily, but he fell down. Fell on all four. And had to crawl back to his feet and hustle back to the bag. Tommy Tresh, a great try, but couldn't reach that high pop fly. A base hit for Gibson. And he's on with one out. Gibson very fast. He would have made second base easily. Here's the pan out on the field. And the gendarmes uh, engage him in polite conversation as they escort him nicely back into the stand. Meanwhile, Gibson Putting on his warm-up jacket at first base. Apparently something's wrong with the zipper. Now he's ready. Here's Kurt Flood. Walked in the first inning. About to go fourth play in the second. So he's four out of 19 now in the series. Pitch by Stoudemire. Ground ball. Looks like a double play. Richardson fumbles. Recovers. No play. An error by Richardson on a sure double play ball. And runners at first and second with only one out. That's Richardson's second air in two days. 
And both on similarly hit balls. The Kurt near second base made to order for a double play. That was hit harder yeah, today than the one yesterday. I think he would have had a much easier chance for the double play today, Harry. Took a little tricky hop to him just as he went to come up with it. Now Lou Brock. There was nothing out of two in this ball game. Only one, only two out of 19 in the series. Left hand. The runners at first and second one out. The stretch, here's the pitch. He swings and he misses. He tried to stop, but he had gone around. Lou Brock punted last time. Was out on a good play by Pepitone. Was out on strikes in the first inning. There was nothing out of four against Scott Meyer in St. Louis. One strike, no more. One out. Runners at first and second. Here's the pitch on the way. A ground ball headed for right field and makes it. Here's Gibson around third. Here's the no play by Mano. Here's the man going to third. Cardinals lead one to nothing. Lou Brock rounded a single into right field. Bob Gibson scoring and flood racing to third base. And that'll bring up Bill White. One to nothing in favor of the Cardinals. Let's see what the infield will do now. With runners at first and third, White is fast. He doesn't hit the double plays often. So Lou Brock drives in his fourth run of the series with his third hit of the series. And he picks an opportune time. The third baseman, Boyer, is in shallow. Short and second are back. Pepitone holds the runner on at first. Here's a pitch to Bill White. Fastball is low, ball one. Blood at third, very fast. Rock at first, extremely fast. Bill White, the hitter, also has good running speed. Runners at first and third. One to nothing, Cardinals win the fifth. Now the stretch. And here's the fifth. About to go, might be a double play. Richardson to second for one. Over to first base. Low, oh, you think the run scores. Pepitone grabbed it on one half. The man was safe at first base. So the run scores. It's two to nothing in favor of the Cardinals. A, a big argument going on. Pepitone will. At first base, up by Al Smith. Yogi Bear is out there now. The throw by Lynch was on one half to Pepitone. Yogi has his little say and walks back off the field. And so it's two to nothing now in favor of the Cardinals. As Flood scored, as the Yankees failed to make the double play. As White forced Brock, Richardson to Lynn. White gets the run batted in. Now Boyer will be the batter. He was robbed of an extra base hit on him. Great play by his brother Cleet in the third. Cardinals have forged into the lead. Two to nothing here in the fifth. against New York. 
They're playing fairly shallow for Boyer and straight away. Gibson fires overhand and gets it through for a strike call. Nothing and one. The Cardinals have two runs, three hits. The Yankees, no runs, one hit. The Yankees have made two errors. The overhand pitch is low outside the ball. The Yankees now have made seven errors in the series, and the Cardinals just won. The 1 1 delivery. He checks the swing, and the slider's over for a strike call. The Cardinals had two runs in the fifth inning with only one ball going out of the infield. One ball, two strikes to Cletus Boyer, and he grounds it foul off to the left of home plate. One ball, two strikes. Gibson has struck out five. He now has 14 strikeouts in the series. The strikeout record for a uh, four-game series of 23 held by Colfax. There's a pop foul going out of play. Held by Christy Matthewson of the Giants back in 19-5. In a six-game series, Chief Bender had 20 strikeouts. Seven-game series, Newhouser struck out 22 in 1945. Gibson has struck out 14 here in this series so far. There's a swing and a miss. That's strikeout number six. In this game for Gibson, as Boyer couldn't connect with a fastball with the letter. Two down. Nobody on him. Stottlemyre coming up, getting a nice hand from the Yankee Stadium crowd. Bill Lins is on deck. The overhand delivery is a ground ball to the right side, a base hit in the right field. Second hit for the Yankees. Stottlemyre's on. With a two-out single to right. Now the top of the order and still wins up. Wins has struck out and grounded to short. So the Cardinals have two runs, three hits. The Yankees have no runs, two hits. Bob Gibson looks him over. Stottlemyre with his warm-up jacket on at first base. Just a step lead down there, and the delivery is outside a ball. One and nothing. One and nothing to Bill Lynn. Now Stottlemyre at first, two down. Overhand pitch is cut on and fouled up against the screen. And the count is one and one. One and one to Bill Lynn, who now has had three hits and 18 times in the series. Gibson stretches the throws. Swinging back to pitch right in on top of him, a fastball just below the belt. One ball, two strikes. Bob Gibson from Creighton University, Omaha, Nebraska. Good enough basketball player to play with the Harlem Globetrotters. A fine all-around athlete. One ball, two strikes. Gibson fires. And there's strike three. Lynn's trying to punt. And misses it. So we have now seven strikeouts for Gibson in the game. In the fifth, the Yankees had no runs. One hit, there were no errors, and one man left. And at the end of five innings, the score is the Cardinals two and the Yankees nothing. Dick Gross will be leading it off. For the Cardinals in the sixth inning, he's walked and grounded to short. Now Stottlemyre pitching. There's a fly ball. Maris and hauls it in for out number one. Grote went for the first pitch. One of the infrequent fly balls that the Cardinals have hit against Stottlemyre, a sinker ball pitcher. They've had only two or three fly balls to the outfield today. Tim McCarver has struck out and lashed a hard one hopper back to the mound as Stottlemyre handled and threw him out at first. One away for St. Louis, nobody on. Left-handed batter McCarver. He's digging in, wants everything just right. Mike Shannon's on deck. Here's the pitch by Stottlemyre. It's low a ball, one or nothing. If uh, you've joined us late, it's scoreless game through four. The Cardinals got two runs in the top of the fifth inning to take the lead. 
They've had one earned run today and one unearned run. There's a strike call. One ball, one strike to McCarver. One and one. 22 year old uh, catcher of the Cardinals, his second full year with them. Playing him as a full hitter to right field. Sotomayor sends the pitch in, it's swung on and hit up the middle. For a base hit into center field. McCarver makes his turn and holds it first. McCarver now has had six hits. He's high in the series for St. Louis. Bobby Richardson with seven hits is high for the Yankees. Carver on first, one out, Mike Shannon, the batter, is grounded the third, and he hit a long fly ball to deep center that Roger Maris called in with a running one-handed stab in the fourth inning. And Shannon discovered, as many batters have discovered, who come to bat here at Yankee Stadium, that a 430 or 40 foot fly can be an out in this big ballpark. Here's a pitch foul back if you don't pull the ball down the line. No balls, one strike. Actually, a right-handed batter is at a disadvantage in this ballpark, especially if his power is in the left center. He can hit them 440, 450, and they can be caught here. And a left-hander can step up and pull one down the line, 310 or 315, and get it into the right field seat. No balls, one strike. McCarver at first, one out. There's a throw to first, driving McCarver back. Cardinals are leading the Yankees by a score of 2-0. Sotomayor stretches the pitch. It's a little bit low. One and one to Mike Shannon. Dell Maxville's on deck for Just a slight breeze today, blowing from home plate out towards second. A one-one pitch to him. Wing sends a bounding ball to short. Wins the second for one. Richardson to first. They've got the double play. Scored. Jordan, the second to first, wins to Richardson the Pepitone. The Cardinals are all out in the sixth. They had no run, one hit. There were no Yankee errors and nobody left. And at the end of five and a half innings, the score, St. Louis two and New York nothing. Last half of the sixth inning, the Yankees have been shut out on two hits by Bob Gibson, Bobby Richardson, Roger Maris, and Mickey Mantle. This is Kurt Gowdy with Harry Carey from Yankee Stadium. We'll be in St. Louis. Day after tomorrow. Harry and I will move over to television. And Joe Garaggio and Bill Rizzuto will be on for the radio play-by-play. -play. The delivery is fouled back out of play by Richardson. Richardson has single at center and popped up. He's had one hit at two times. and overhands him. There's a pop foul coming back out of play again. Right over our heads here in the upper deck. No balls, two strikes. The batter's in shadow, so is the pitcher now. So is the second baseman and first baseman. And the right fielder. The left side of the infield and left center and center field are still in bright sunshine here in Yankee Stadium. Gibson with two strikes. Comes down. There's a ground ball up the middle and a center field for a base hit. Richardson leads off the last of the sixth inning with a single. And that's his eighth hit of the series. The record for most hits in a World Series is 12. Roger Maris hit into a double play in the first inning and flat out to left in the third. He's 0 for 2. Now you're getting to these big guns of the Yankee lineup. Especially with Maris and Mantle batting left-handed with a short porch on right field. Red by Gibson. The pitch is outside a ball, one and nothing. The Cardinals have two runs on four hits. The Yankees have no runs, three hits. The Yankees have made the only two errors of the game. Playing Maris is a dead full hitter to right field. Gibson to the belt fires. Ball two is high, two and nothing. Gibson has lost two batters, one intentional. And most of the way, he's been ahead of the batter. Two and nothing count to Roger Maris. Richardson is first, nobody out. The pitch. Maris flashing away at a fastball in the letter. Two balls and one strike. Maris 
Lewis has had four hits now, 19 times up in the series. The 2 1 delivery swings and fouls that one back out of play. They're not pulling Bob Gibson much today. Meyer hits to the opposite field, and Richardson flops two back through the box, and those have been the base hits. In fact, uh, outside of those three hits, the Yankees have not hit a ball hard. They haven't had any hard line drives. The Cardinals have had uh, easy chances most of the way. Two and two to Roger Merritt. Gibson checks and throws. There's a high fly ball to center field. The third plus two steps to his right, taps his glove and puts it away. And we have one down. Richardson holds it first. Mickey Mantle, the batter, has walked and struck out. The Cardinals are ahead, two to nothing. Last of the sixth inning. Mantle being played around toward right. Gibson twice has stopped Maris from pulling the ball. There's a curve outside the ball. Maris hits to the opposite field in the third with a fly out, and it just flies to straightaway center in the sixth. So let's see what Gibson does here with Mickey Mantle. One out, Bobby Richardson at first. Gibson ready for the one nothing pitch. It's on the way, and it's a strike call, a fast ball in there. One ball, one strike. On the count. Once again, a check of the runner. Pitch is low to Mantle. Ball two. Two balls, one strike. Ken Boyer told Gibson before the game, throw hard, keep that ball down low, Bob. You're not going to have too many problems. For the background of the center field bleacher, the fans out there, and the sun and the shadows mixing together to bother the batters there. Two balls, one strike. Pitching, strike two swinging, that ball, two and two to Mickey Mantle. Bobby Richardson at first base, one out. Cardinals ahead, two to nothing if he just joined us. Gibson steps and throws. Maxwell leading off, takes the pitch low outside, ball one. 
Max drove single to right, took a call third strike. He's had one hit at two times. The Cardinals have two runs, four hits to no errors. The Yankees have no runs, three hits and two errors. Curve is over for a strike call. One ball, one strike to Max Zone. With one out of the fifth inning, Bob Gibson singles on a pop fly to left field. Bobby Richardson moved his Kurt Flood grounder to the foul ball beat on the ground down the third baseline. Little Brock then single to right field, scoring Gibson. And Bill White hit a ground ball. They couldn't get the double play as Flood scored, and those are the two runs for the Cardinals and the only two runs of the game. A dribbler foul to the left of home plate. One ball, two strikes to Maxwell. Bob Gibson will be up next, and he's sure to get a big hand when he steps to home plate. And then Kurt Flood at the top of the Cardinal batting order. One ball, two strikes. And the pitch is just inside a ball. Two and two. Nobody on, nobody out for the Cardinals in the top of the seventh. Two and two to the count. The two-two delivery. Foul back. Count still two and two. Ball, no strike. 
Epitone holding against Flood. The outfield straight away for Brock. And the pitch swings and misses on a fastball strike one. One ball, one strike. Cardinals two, Yankees nothing, seventh inning. In the last of the seventh, the Yankees will have Epitone, Fresh, and Boyer up. Here's the stretch now. Brock cuts and fouls it back out of play. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. Kurt Simmons will definitely start for the Cardinals Wednesday in St. Louis. Depends on Whitey Ford. Could be Ford, maybe Fouts. Yogi Berra will be undecided until he sees how the bruised heel of Whitey Ford uh, does in the way of improving. One ball, two strikes. Two down for St. Louis. Kurt Flood at first base. And a one ball, two strike count to Lou Brock. Donald Meyer gets the side. Here's the one-two pitch. There's a line shot in the left center for a pass. On the third. Here's a throw into second by Maris, and the Cardinals have runners on first and third, two out. Bill White has struck out, fly to right, grounded into a fourth play. He's had the toughest series so far at the bat for the Cardinals, one hit and 18 times up. You might say he's about due. I think you could say that, Kurt. The outfield plays him toward right. Cardinals ahead 2-0. Have a threat right now with two down. Runners on first and third. A throw to first, grinding Brock back. Lou Brock, the second leading base dealer in the National League, stole 43 bases during the regular season. He's at first. Was the third. Here's the stretch by Stottlemyre. The pitch is outside a ball. First, a runner like Brock puts that extra pressure on the pitcher. Stottlemyer has to worry now about keeping him close. One ball, no strike. To Bill White. Ken Boyer on deck. Cardinals two, Yankees nothing. Top half the seventh inning. Stottlemyer to the belt. Now the pitch. Outside, a ball two. Two and nothing. Two balls and no strikes to Bill White. There is action now in the Yankee bullpen. Stottlemyre drops to the belt again. Throws. There's a drive hit into deep left. Fresh going hard. He's under and he grabs it. Good play by Fresh. And that's murder of Sudfield and left field. Fresh started back and then had to cut toward the corner. On the gallop to haul that hard drive of White there. And probably a fellow that was less experienced playing at Sudfield might have messed that one up out there. That was a difficult chance. In the seventh inning, St. Louis had no runs, two hits, there were no errors, and two left. At the end of six and a half now, it is still the Cardinals two and the Yankees nothing. Joe Pepitone swings and misses strike one as we lead off the last of the seventh inning. The big crowd here for the seventh inning stretch settling back down again. Cardinals ahead two to nothing. It will be Pepitone, Fresh, and Boyer for the Yankees in the last half of the seventh. Pepitone is grounded out and struck out. There's a ground ball and is in a right field for a base hit. Just out of the reach of second baseman Del Maxwell, who is going off to his left. They fourth hit in the game for the Yankees. They've all been singles. They haven't been able to generate any extra base power in this game. And here's Tommy Fresh up. He's been walked purposely, and he's fly to right. The last two innings in a row now, the Yankees have had their leadoff man get a base hit. A high foul out of play back in third. The Yankees one big threat in the game. 
the second inning. They had the base and loaded, one out. Boyer and Stottlemyre both struck out. They haven't had a scoring chance since. One strike to Tom Craig. The fast ball is through for a strike call. No balls and two strikes. No balls, two strikes. Step it down at first. Here's the pitch again. The pitch. There's a ground ball. Hit. Down the first base foul, white bottle of the round, but it was just foul. As Fred broke his bat on that one. The ball started out fair down the line, and when White went to grab it, he fumbled it. However, he was fumbling into foul territory. First base umpire Al Smith gave it the foul sign. A two strike count to Tommy Craig. Joe Pepitone is first base. Nobody out for New York in the last half of seventh inning. The Cardinals are leading. Two to nothing. Gibson with a stretch and fit. Top side. One ball, two strikes. Gibson with 18 strikeouts in two games of the series. He struck out nine today. The one, two pitch. A pounding ball foul again down the first baseline. Two lazy hops to Bill White, who takes it back to the pitcher's mound. Two and two to Tommy Craig. Switch hitter, runs well for a big man. He's hard to double up. Gets it ready, throws. Curved him and just missed with that one. Gibson thought he had it. He was giving a little body English to came up to home play. Trying to guide it over that outside corner. Two balls and two strikes to Fred. Step at first base. No out. Gibson ready. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Fred struck out in a fastball. And now Bob Gibson has struck out ten. The World Series record for most strikeouts in a game, 15. Held by Sandy Koufax. We're going to have a batter for Boyer. John Blanchard is coming up to hit for Cletus Boyer. Yogi Berra decides you better start making some moves here the way Bob Gibson is going. Gibson's been shot for that control today. He's walked one. 
and then a, a, yeah, an intentional walk in the second. Two walks all together, but one intentional. Lopez fouls it out of play. Upstairs, the back of first. One ball, one strike to Hector Lopez. Frank Procetti clapping his hands down in the third base closing box. Scattering some encouragement up to pitch hitter Lopez. Playing Lopez to the opposite field. Gets the that fast today. Pitch is high. Ball two. They figure they're not going to pull uh, as much against Gibson as they might against some other fellows. So Kurt Flood's well over in right center. And Shannon over toward that right field line. Brock straight away in left. They're giving these right-handed batters a lot of gap today in left center. Two balls, one strike to Lopez. Gibson overhands him. He swings and misses. Looks like a hard slider that time. Two balls, two strikes. Lopez hit 260 during the regular season for the Yankees, including 10 homers, 34 RBIs. Pepitone at first, two out, two and two to Hector Lopez. Here's the pitch. Quick three swinging, got him on a fastball. 11 strikeouts for Bob Gibson. In the last half of seven, no runs for New York, one hit, there were no errors, and one man left. At the end of seven, it's the Cardinals two, and the Yankees nothing. We have a new pitcher for the Yankees now, Hal Renup. Hal Renup, a right-handed reliever, who had arm trouble off and on during his past season. He ended up with six wins, four losses, and earned run average of 3.13. And Pedro Gonzalez has done the third base for the Yankees. Boyer was lifted for a pinch hitter. Seven inning totals. The Cardinals have two runs, six hits, and no errors. The Yankees have no runs, four hits, and two errors. Leading off for the Cardinals will be Ken Boyer. Boyer's had two official times at bat. Both times he hit the ball sharply down to his brother Cletus the third, who made brilliant plays on him. Pitch is low, ball one by Renham. And we had an oddity here in the World Series in the first inning. Boyer hit a ground ball with short that uh, was a force out. The pitch outside. But as he was swinging, the catcher Howard tipped his bat and catcher's interference was called. Howard was charged with an error, and Boyer was awarded first base at no time at bat. Two balls and no strike to Ken Boyer. Dick Brooks on deck for the Cardinals, and then Tim McCarver. The 2 0 delivery, there's a bounding ball, two off to Gonzalez, the third. Plays it over to first base, he gets it by two steps, and we have one away. Road has walked, rounded the short, and flied out. Broke with four hits 17 times in the series. Cardinals have one away, nobody on. They're ahead, two to nothing. Ran up over Hansen, a little bit high for a ball, one to nothing. Looking ahead to the last of the eighth for the Yankees, the top of their order coming up, Lynn, Richardson, and Merritt. The pitch is a fly ball foul out of play. One ball, one strike. No game tomorrow. Game six of the series in St. Louis. 1.45 Eastern time. 12.45. One ball, one strike. There's a foul again out of play, back to first. A one ball, two strike count to Dick Brooks. Cardinals have one away, nobody on. Hal Renup pitching a relief of Mal Stottlemyre. Here's the pitch. A ball, two and two. Stottlemyre gave up only one earned run today and one unearned run. But he was up against the fellow today, Bob Gibson, who's been just a little bit better. He has shut out the Yankees. Two pitch is lined in the right field. There's a clean base hit. Panel plays it on the first hop, flips it back into Bobby Richardson. And the Cardinals have a runner on first now, one out. Cardinals have seven hits in the game. The Yankees have four. 
Tim McCarver has struck out. Bounce to the pitcher and single to center. McCarver six hits high for the Cardinals in the series. Cardinals two runs, seven hits. The Yankees no runs, four hits. Reynolds pitch is high, ball one. Donald Meyer worked seven innings for the Yankees today. Allowed six hits, two runs. He struck out six and he walked two. One ball, no strike to Tim McCarver. Throw to first. Back is Dick Rose. Cut the toe holding there against him. Now McCarver wants the bat. Rosenberg flipped over to him. They play him the pull the right center in the right field. One ball, no strike. We're all set to go again. Renner very slowly drops to the belt, throws. There's a little pop out in the shallow left. Could be a tough play. Here's Smith coming on. He can't get it. Got his glove on the ball. Ty Ford and couldn't hold on to it. And the Cardinals have runners on first and second. And McCarver hit a blooper in the shallow left out of the reach of Lynn. Fred came a long way for it, got his glove on it, tried to dive and roll over and hold on to it, but couldn't do it. And out comes Yogi Berra of the Yankee dugout. The batter is Mike Shannon. Cardinals now have two men on, one out. Trying to talk to his pitcher, Renham. The Yankees have warm-up action in the bullpen. Elston Howard has joined Bear at the mound. Bear is looking around. And he wants a new pitcher. Oh, I have a new man coming on for the Yankees. But Shannon up, evidently, uh, Bear didn't like the way Renham was looking. And let's see who comes out of that Yankee bullpen. Out of our view, the right center field. And so uh, the man he's putting on a jacket now as he comes into our side until he gets a little closer and we can see who it is. We won't know who the new Yankee relief pitcher is. So Hal Renner pitches a third of an inning. He allows two hits. He's responsible for both runners on. Mickelson coming in. Pete Mickelson. Well, come in to relieve Hal Renner. And as the Yankees are changing pitchers here, especially for you fans who have joined us in the late inning, Harry Carey will give you a recap of this ball game. Kurt, uh, all the scoring, of course, in the fifth inning. Started with Maxfield being called out on strikes. Then Gibson hit a high top fly that dropped in short left field for a hit. Then came the big break of the ball game when Flood hit a double play ball to Bobby Richardson who fumbled it. Both runners were safe. Then Lou Brock single to right, driving in Gibson with the first run, and Bill White hit into a fourth play as Kurt Flood carried the second run across. That's the ball game. Bob Gibson. Pitching perhaps one of his finest ball games of the year. He's already fanned 11 men. Holds a 2 to nothing lead. 65,633 paid here for the fifth game of the series. So Pete Nicholson is finishing up his warm-up process. And it'll be Mike Shannon batting with runners at first and second and one out. All right, Harry. Shannon is grounded to third, wide out to deep center, and wrapped into a double play. Mickelson won seven and lost four for the Yankees during the season with an earned run average of 3.56. This will be his third appearance of the World Series. He pitched only an inning and a third, though. Allowed two hits and one run. There's uh, an interesting... Vinny Smith, the home plate umpire, is practicing on Mickelson warm-up pitches. Smith crouching down behind the catcher as if a batter were there. He doesn't know Mickelson, and he wanted to gauge his speed of his pitches. That was like a batter taking imaginary cuts. The home plate umpire Smith was 
practicing up on Miss Middleton's uh, warm-up pitches. Well, here we are now with Mike Shannon up. Lanky right-handed batter of the Cardinals. Cardinals have thrown at second, the Carver at first. And the pitch is swung on and line foul down the left field line. Ooh, did he hit that ball. Like a rocket down that left field line. Curtis, the funny thing, this boy playing his first World Series has been a more dangerous-looking hitter during the series than he was during the regular season. Well, that's right, Harry, and I'll tell you, when they've got him out, uh, it's been on line drives or long smashes to the outfield. That was a wicked ride. He jumped in down that left field line. One strike to Mike Shannon. One out for the Cardinals in the eighth. They have runners on first and second. The Cardinals are ahead two to nothing. Pete Mickelson is pitching to Shannon with Maxville on deck. Mickelson with a stretch. Here's the pitch. There's a sinker ball that hit foul on the ground off to the left of home plate. No balls and two strikes. Goes, goes back to Ted second. McCarver at first. Mickelson is primarily a sinker ball pitcher. He also cross-fires those right-handed fires. He takes that step toward third and comes in there with a sidearm delivery. His breaking stuff is usually going down and away from the right-hander. He had a, a great spring training for the Yankees and uh, forced them to bring him north. There's a pitch high. One ball, two strikes. There's always some kid in spring training out of a minor league ball club uh, in your farm system who you don't count on for the season that is so good in spring training that you have to make a place for him. Every ball club seems to have something happen to him like that, and it's always very pleasant for a team. Mickelson was the new one for the Yankees this year. One ball, two strikes. Runners on first and second, one out for the Cardinals. Mickelson pitched to Mike Shannon. A foul upstairs out of play. One ball, two strikes. Shannon has had four hits and 18 times up in the series. McCarver with seven hits, and Bobby Richardson with eight hits are the team leaders. One ball, two strikes. Both runners have good leads. Pepitone's not holding against McCarver at first base. Long, slow stretch by Mickelson. Change up and swing on him at spring three. He struck him out with a beautiful change of speed delivery. And that draws the rules and odds of the crowd. Well, the Cardinals have had seven men strike out. The Yankees have had 11. We have had 18 strikeouts in this game. And the batter now with two outs, runners on first and second for the Cardinals, is Dell Maxwell, who is single to right, struck out and grounded out. Maxwell batting right-handed. Mickelson's pitch is a curve that's over for a strike call. Nothing a one. Here's Bob Gibson, the Cardinal pitcher, coming out on deck with his warm-up uh, jacket on. No balls, one strike. Runners on first and second, two outs. The pitch comes in. There's a bounding ball, one hop to Gonzalez to third. Flips over to Richardson at second for the fourth out on McCarver. And the Cardinals are retired on the eighth inning. They had no run, two hits. No Yankee errors. The Cardinals left two. At the end of seven and a half innings, the scores, the Cardinals two, and the Yankees nothing. Yankee Stadium, the top of the Yankee batting order coming up, Bill Lynn, Bobby Richardson, and Roger Maris against Bob Gibson, and it's been an overpowering Bob Gibson this afternoon. He has struck out 11 Yankees. He has walked two. He has allowed four scattered singles in this game. The Yankees have had only one scoring threat, the second inning when they had the base loaded one out, and then Gibson struck out the next two men. A strength call to the knees to Bill Lynn. Lynn's the Yankee shortstop and struck out, rounded the short and struck out. 
Lynn batting right against the right-handed pitcher. A one strike delivery. There's a bounding ball hit on one hop to Boyer at third. An easy play. Throws the first. One down. Bobby Richardson has single to center, popped up, and single to center. As Harry Carey told you, uh, Gibson at times, as any fastballer will do, and run out of gas in the late inning. They get out there and they pump hard. They just throw just as hard as they can. There's a little pop up to the shortstop. Throw and he's under, grabs it, and Gibson doesn't look like he's firing at all as he is completely overpowered Lynn and Richardson. Two down, nobody on, and Maris up. Maris is hit into a double play, fly to left, then fly to center. Cardinals are ahead two to nothing. But Gibson shows no sign of firing here in the late inning. The last five men, he's had two strikeouts, two pop-ups, and a ground ball that he's faced. Here's the pitch. Maris up, grounds it foul, back of the plate. No balls, one strike. Mickey Battle on deck. Richardson's had two of the Yankee hits. Pepperstone had a single, and Stottlemyre single. Easy bounding ball to first. White steps on the bag. And that's the easiest inning of the ball game for Bob Gibson, the eighth inning. Three up and three down. At the end of eight, it's the Cardinals two, and the Yankees nothing. Stadium knows a great pitching job when they've seen it. And listen to the hands of Bob Gibson. for the Cardinals in the ninth inning and struck out, single and struck out. Facing Pete Mickelson, the third pitcher of the game for the Yankees. Stottlemyre started with seven innings. Renner pitched the third of an inning. Mickelson finished out the eighth inning. Gibson batting right-handed. Fouls are off at home plate, strike one. Bob Gibson with three outs to go now as he continues with the type of pitching he's showing us through the first eight innings and then the red first winging back to St. Louis with a lead in the World Series. But he still has to get through the night. Here's the one-strike delivery. A swing and a miss on a breaking pitch. Strike two. No balls and two strikes to Gibson. Curtin Flood is on deck and then a loop run. Cardinals have two runs, eight hits. The Yankees, no runs, four hits. Both Cardinal runs came in the fifth inning. As the Yankees again messed up with a potential double play ball. There's a pitch. Whoa. A ball. One and two. Kurt, the Yankees will have Mantle, Howard. Oh, this is not over yet. Yes, sir. There they are. Those. So hold your breath, fellas. In this ballpark especially. A swing and a miss, strike three. Gibson strikes down on a low fastball. Second strikeout for Mickelson. Eight strikeouts recorded by Yankee pitching today, and 11 by Gibson. So we've had 19 strikeouts in this game. Here's the top of the order now, and Kurt Flood. He's walked, hit into a fourth play, reached in an error, and single to left. One out of three. He takes the pitch low and inside. Ball one. Cardinals two, Yankees nothing. Top of the ninth inning. Mickelson gets the sign from Howard. A 1 0 pitch. Outside, ball two to Kurt Flood. Two and nothing. Mickelson behind him, 2 nothing. The pitch is a swing and a miss. Strike one. Two balls and one strike. Cardinals that one away. Nobody on. Steve Mickelson. Delivered 
there. The line drive to third baseman, John Dolly. They have two down. It's been some hard hit balls to third today. A doer you don't play. One thing that third baseman has to have is those quick reflexes. Lou Brock has struck out, grounded out trying to punt. Single to right, single to left center. He's had two out of four. Playing him straight away, a left-handed batter. He hits a fly ball out into left center. Maris coming in, takes it. And the Cardinals are out one, two, three in the ninth. So we're going now to the last of the ninth inning with the score. The Cardinals two and the Yankees nothing. Last 
call in the last of the ninth inning. Here's Gibson to the bell again. Throws. Foul back in the count two and two. And Gibson is firing just as hard right now as he was in the first inning. Try to take a look at that Kreichel dugout. All the players up on the top step. Clapping their hands, yelling encouragement out to Gibson. Two balls and two strikes to Pepitone. Tommy Fresh is on deck. Here's the delivery. There's a ball hit off Gibson's glove. He runs over, picks it up. Oh! Out oh, at first three. Out at first. The Yankees are arguing. Gibson is hit. On the back or on the hip. And the Yankees are really arguing with Al Smith of the American League on that one. Yogi Berra. And the Cardinals are concerned about Gibson. As Pepitone hit a wicked smash to the mound. It caramed off Bob Gibson. Right hip or the ball of his back. Roll all the way to the third base foul line. Gibson made one of the greatest fielding plays I've ever seen a pitcher make. He ran over there. Picked that ball up and while falling backwards, flipped the ball to first base and got stepped on by an eyelash. And Gibson is really hurt out there in the mound. He's walking around, trying to walk the paint out. If the ball had not hit Gibson, it would have been easily through into center field for a base hit, and the Yankees would have had the tying run drop. Well, they say a good fielding pitcher can save himself five ball games a year, Harry. Mr. Gibson may have saved, saved himself a World Series ball game here. It was a tremendous play, as you described, Kurt, and uh, what a great athlete he is. Simple and agile and quick. And he had to be all of those things, and he also had to have that great arm to get Puppet on. Because as you said, he was falling backward as he threw the ball. And threw perfectly. Battles on second, now two down. They're just getting uh, wife's attention. I think they want Gibson to take the wind-up. Like they're trying to get the attention of uh, Bill White to tell Gibson to take a full wind-up. In other words, don't work out of the stretch. Have something on that ball. Take that wind-up. With the Cardinals leading 2-0 off to the ninth inning. Bob Gibson into his stretch. So there's a drive into the deep right center. Two runs, five hits, and two errors for the Yankees. And a 
voted by Grote to start it off. Howard struck out. Pepitone hit a line drive. Right. Gibson made a great fielding play throwing him out. And then Fresh with two down, tied it with a home run into the right center field bleachers. We're into extra innings. And the play-by-play now by Harry Carey. Okay, thank you very much, Kurt. Top of the tenth inning, Bill White will lead it off. All tied up now, two and two. Tommy Tresh. The heroic with a long home run to deep right center. Bill White. He's been hitless today. Here's the pitch by Nicholson. It's a fastball high. White drove it around, but he's nothing out of four. One out of 19 now for the World Series. We're in the tenth inning, and so the first time the World Series goes an extra inning this year. Costly error by Dick Grote, as it turns out now. Here's a pitch on the way. He swings and he misses, and that evens it up. One ball, one strike. Pete Mickelson, who has pitched one and two-thirds innings of perfect baseball so far. Wears glasses, big right-hander. We're in the top of the tenth, tied up two and two. There's a wind-up now to pitch to White. Curveball is in there, a beauty, a strike call. Two strikes and a ball. White says they're not pitching them any differently in this series than they did during the regular season. Just not hitting. But this is kind of a fellow who might unload on you at any time, as did Tommy Tresh in the bottom of the ninth. A dramatic home run. Here's the pitch. A tap foul off to the right. Two strikes and a ball. 65,633 paid here today. The Cardinals led for eight and two-thirds innings. And then Tommy Tresh destroy Bob Gibson's dream of a shutout. Two strikes and a ball. Here's the pitch on the way. Oh, change high. He almost went fishing for it. Two balls, two strikes. Mickelson has had great results with that change of pace of his. Bill White trying to get something started for the Cardinals. Top of the tenth tie, 2-2. Two, two. Here's the pitch on the way. A tap foul. A rolling foul back to the screen. rushed Mantle's ground ball, which was softly hit. Mantle was limping down the line, as it turned out. He had more time than he thought he had. He wind up now to pitch on the way. He fouled him. And the fight up by Vinny Smith is hobbling his pain. That caught him on the toe. Our trainer, Bob Bowman of the Cardinals, comes out again. A foul tip off of Vinny Smith. The count on Bill White is even up at two balls, two strikes. Boy, you know that one hurts. Bowman is massaging Vinny Smith's kneecap. Third base umpire, Bill McKinley of the American League comes down the line. The entire first base section of the infield is in shadow, as is most of the third base side. Patches of sunlight where Phil Lins is playing near second base and where Pedro Gonzalez is at third. Vinny Smith still huddled over. Lins a little bit now, but he's going to stay in there. Brown gives him a nice hand. The Cardinals scored two and an error set up their run. They got their two runs in the fifth inning. The Yankees came back with two out in the bottom of the ninth on Tommy Tresh and Homer to tie. So now play will be resumed here. Two balls, two strikes. Bill White the hitter. Pete Nicholson. Into the windup and here's the pitch to White. Popped up. Will it stay in play? Nope, on the screen, out of play. And the count stays two balls, two strikes. Some fan has just lost his hat. It falls from the third chair down to the screen immediately before it. What a strange thing happening here today. Two balls, two strikes. Pete Nicholson is ready. The delivery now. Foul back to the screen again, right at me. Almost got it through there. Almost at the hat, too. It's interesting to see how 
much that hat costs. If it's an expensive hat, its owner will probably figure out some way to crawl up to get it. If it was inexpensive, he'll forget about it. Two two pitch. Foul back again and out of play. Two balls, two strikes on Bill White. We're at the top of the tenth. All tied up, two and two. Tommy Trish with his second home run. His other home run was against Ray Sadecki. Two balls, two strikes, the pitch. Ball three is low, and Boyer will be next. Three balls, two strikes, on Bill White. Pete Nicholson will relieve Kyle Rennett in the eighth inning and pitched out of trouble. Three balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch to Bill White. Ball four was inside, a change of pace. The White walk. The lead runner at first with nobody out, and here's Kenny Boyer. Boyer's hit the ball sharply, but out every time. Safe on an interference call in the first inning. Ninth inning, Mantle's ground ball was booted by Grote to start it off. Howard struck out. Pepitone hit a line drive that Gibson made a great fielding play throwing him out. And then Tresh put two down, tied it with a home run into the right center field bleachers. We're into extra innings and the play-by-play now by Harry Carey. Okay, thank you very much, Kurt. Top of the tenth inning, Bill White will lead it off. All tied up now, two and two. Tommy Tresh. The Heroics with a long home run to deep right center. Bill White. He's been hitless today. Here's the pitch by Mickelson. It's a fastball high. White drove in a run, but he's nothing out of four. One out of 19 now for the World Series. We're in the 10th inning, and so the first time the World Series goes in extra innings this year. A costly error by Dick Grote, as it turns out now. Here's the pitch on the way. He swings and he misses, and that evens it up. One ball, one strike. Pete Mickelson, who's pitched one and two-thirds innings of perfect baseball so far. Wears glasses, big right-hander. We're in the top of the tenth, tied up two and two. There's the wind-up now and the pitch to White. Curveball is in there, a beauty, a strike call. Two strikes and a ball. White says they're not pitching him any differently in this series than they did during the regular season. Just not hitting. But this is the kind of a fellow who might un- unload on you at any time, as did Tommy Tresh in the bottom of the ninth. A dramatic home run. Here's a pitch. A tap foul off to the right. Two strikes and a ball. 65,633 paid here today. The Cardinals led for eight and two-thirds innings. And then Tommy Tresh destroyed Bob Gibson's dream of a shutout. Two strikes and a ball. Here's the pitch on the way. Slow change high. He almost went fishing for it. Two balls, two strikes. Mickelson has had great results with that change of pace of his. Two balls, two strikes, the pitch. Ball three is low, and Boyer will be next. Three balls, two strikes on Bill White. Pete Mickelson, who relieved Hal Reniff in the eighth inning and pitched out of trouble. Three balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch to Bill White. Ball four was inside, a change of pace. So White walks. The lead run is at first with nobody out, and here's Kenny Boyer. Boyer's hit the ball sharply but out every time. Safe on an interference call in the first inning. He won the ball game yesterday, you know, with a grand slammer. Runner at first, nobody gone. Mickelson gets set. He'll pitch off a stretch now. Wide a lead, and here's the pitch. He shortens up and bunts. Pass the mound. He's going to go for a hit. Everybody is safe. Kenny Boyer bunted so perfectly that he beat it out. 
Bobby Richardson was headed for first base to cover. Pepitone started in. Mickelson came off the mound, and Boyer butted right by him towards second base. The Cardinals have runners at first and second, and nobody out. Mickelson, a big right-hander, stands 6'3", weighs 210. He'll be 25 years old on the 25th day of this month. Here's Dick Grote up there. They expect him to sacrifice. There's the stretch in the pitch. He tried to bunt, miss. They got White picked off second. He's trying for third. He is safe. The throw gets away from Gonzalez. Bill White was picked off second base and very wisely didn't try to get back, advanced to third, and dove in headlong. The throw was low. And so White's at third, Boyer at first, nobody out. The play went from Elston Howard to Phil Lins to Pedro Gonzalez. The infield now is in. Dick Grote up there. The stretch. Here's the pitch. Smash to the third baseman. He's going to throw to second base for one out, and that's all they can get. The infield was in, and Gonzalez had to wait for Richardson to get over to cover. The ball was in a one-hop right at him. Now McCarver comes up. The situation's the same with one away. Runners at first and third. McCarver's had two hits, two out of four. The infield is playing back around short and second now, hoping for a double play. Richardson is back. Lenz is back. Left-handed batter waiting. The outfield is shallow. There's the stretch. The pitch to McCarver. Fastball low and inside. One ball, no strikes. McCarver has squeezed home a run for the Cardinals previously. Not this year, but last year. The game against Cincinnati. Bill White was credited for us with a stolen base on that play where he's picked off second and advanced to third. The pitch to McCarver. A high pop foul back. And the count is even to the ball and a strike. McCarver now is the key man. There's only one out now. The infield... In at first and third, back at short and second. McCarver, for a catcher, runs well. So he isn't an easy double play target. The outfield's shallow enough to have a play at the plate on a fly ball. One ball, one strike. Pete Mickelson at the belt. Here's the pitch on the way. Outside. Two balls and a strike. Bill White trying to bother the pitcher as he comes down the line. A walk, a safe bunt, a force play. That's what's happened here in the 10th. Runners at first and third, only one out. The game tied two and two. Mickelson takes a look around. Bill White, the runner at third base. McCarver waiting. Mickelson takes a lot of time getting ready. Now he's saw time is called as McCarver steps out of the battered box. Mickelson wanting to make sure that he had the right sign. One ball, two balls, and a strike. Here's the strike. Now the pitch on the way. Outside ball three. Three balls and a strike. On Tim McCarver, he takes a look at the third base coach, Vern Benson. If the pitch is to his liking, it probably will be hitting. Three balls and a strike. Runners at first and third. Road is not fast. He's at first. White, a little better than average speed, is at third. Three balls and a strike. 
Now the signal given. Here's a pitch on the way. A ground ball fouled on the first baseline. Get that ball sharply, and now it's three and two. Three balls, two strikes. On two previous hitters on a three and two situation, Mickelson has thrown that big change of pace curve. Three balls, two strikes. McCarver the batter. There's the stretch by Mickelson. Here's the pitch. There goes Grote. There's a drive. Way back. It might be out of here. It could be. It is a home run. Tim McCarver being congratulated by everybody. A long drive into the lower section in right field. And the Cardinals have taken a 5-2 lead. McCarver's first World Series home run. And the Cardinals' third home run of the series. Boy, Harry, this, this fellow's been some ball player for the Cardinals in this series. That he is. Here's a curveball to Shannon Lowe now. Mickelson on 3-2 and two threw a fastball, and McCarver really put the wood to it. Five to two of the Cardinals lead in the top of the tenth. Mike Shannon, the batter. Now the windup in the pitch by Mickelson. Swung on and missed. The Cardinals have only hit three home runs in this World Series, but what big ones. Shannon got the first one in St. Louis off Whitey Ford with a man on to tie the first game of the series at 4-4, and the Cardinals went on to win 9-5. Yesterday, Boyer hit one with the bases loaded to win the game 4-3. And now McCarver just hit one with two on to give the Cardinals a 5-2 lead. Shannon takes a curve inside. Two balls and a strike. Three runs are in. 5-2 St. Louis from the top of the 10. McCarver hitting almost 500 for the series. Here's the pitch. Low. 8 out of 17 for McCarver, and he had three hits in a row here today. Three out of five. 23-year-old catcher. They must be dancing in the street in his hometown of Memphis, Tennessee, where he is king. No Tennessee waltz. <laughs> Mike Shannon has a count of three balls and a strike. Now ready? Here's the pitch. Strike call, the fastball over the outside corner. So this World Series continues to mount in excitement as these two ball clubs so evenly match. Scratch at each other through a very exciting series. Here's the pitch. Shannon swings and strikes out on a curveball. So that's two away now, and it brings up Dow Maxville. Maxville has had one out of four. This thing isn't over yet. Let's take a look ahead to the bottom half of the tenth. It'll be pinch hitter for the pitcher and then the top of the batting order. Bob Gibson's assignment in the bottom of the tenth will be to keep from getting to the siege guns of the Yankee lineup. Here's a pitch. Maxfield hits a slow roller. The pitch is going to have to cover the toss. He is safe. Out at first base. The pitcher had a le leap for the bag. And the Cardinals, Joe Schultz argues with the first base umpire, claiming that he missed the bag, but Maxfield is out. Pepitone to Mickelson. So it is three runs, two hits. No errors and nobody left. And now at the middle of the tenth inning, the score... Cardinals 5, Yankees 2. 1965 Plymouth Fury. 22 big, plush models. Solidly in the low price class. Big, plush, 65 Plymouth Fury. Something exciting, something exciting. Now, with all the roaring 65s at your Plymouth dealers. Something for everyone. Mike Keegan, whose dad was a major league star with the Cleveland Indians and other ball clubs. Mike, a first baseman and outfielder. 
Left-handed batter. He's hitting for Pete Mickelson. Five to two, the Cardinals lead. Where are they? Bottom half of the tenth inning. There's the windup now on the pitch by Gibson, and the fastball is wide. It'll be Mike Hegan, Phil Lenz, and Bobby Richardson coming up in this inning. Here's a bouncing ball foul off to the right. And the count is evened up a ball and a strike. The fan missed the chance as he reached over the railing. Mike Hegan will replace Tony Kubek on the Yankee roster for the World Series. Here's the pitch on the way. High pop foul out of play into the stands. Two strikes and a ball. The Cardinals with a three-run lead now as a result of Tim McCarver's first Major League home run coming with two men on base in the top of the tenth. Here's the pitch. It's a strike three call. That's a 13th strikeout for Bob Gibson. Mike Hegan batting for Mickelson is called out on strikes. And uh, Kurt, I believe that's the first called third strike. Checking quickly at the score sheet. I think you're right, Harry. All the previous ones have been swinging third strikes. There's an oddity, too. Here now is Phil Lins, the shortstop. Pops up on the first pitch on the infield. Boyer getting under the ball at the pitcher's mound. He's got it. Lins on the first pitch popped to Boyer. Here's Bobby Richardson. Richardson's had two out of four. A Yankee error gave the Cardinals a chance to score the first two. Cardinal error gave the Yankees a chance to score their two. But then McCarver took care of everything in the 10th inning. Here's a fastball to Bobby Richardson. A strike is caught. Two men out, nobody on base. We're in the bottom half of the 10th inning. The Cardinals leading 5-2. to two. The pitch on the way. Ground ball up the middle, and Richardson has another hit. And this game isn't over yet. Richardson gets his third hit of the ball game. A ground ball up the middle, and here's Roger Maris. And should he get on, Mickey Mantle would be coming up. And many of the fans who had started for the exits now stop and jam up the aisle. They realize the rapidity with which ball games can turn. First pitch to Maris is high. Bobby Richardson now has nine hits in this series, which is only in its fifth game. The record is 12. Roger Maris, the batter. He's nothing out of four today. There's the stretch. Gibson's pitch. High pop foul. If it stays in play, the ball game will be over. Boyer near the stands, reaching. Cardinals win it. Boyer, a one-handed stab in the box. And the Cardinals have taken the lead in the series as Roger Maris fouls out to Kenny Boyer. So the final score, the Cardinals five, the Yankees two in ten innings. Well, the World Series will switch now to St. Louis for the sixth game Wednesday afternoon at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Well, I tell you, Kurt, I uh, have the feeling this thing might go seven games. These two ball clubs are so so evenly balanced, and it's uh, so far it's certainly been a most exciting series. And I think uh, a little bit of an oddity, Kurt, is the fact that uh, it's rare indeed that you see the opposition beat the Yankees with their own weapon, which is the home run ball. That's right, and uh, that's what young McCarver did there in the 10th inning. So it's three games to two, Cardinals lead, and again, Harry Carey. The totals again, five runs, ten hits, one error for the Cardinals. Gibson now one and one in series competition, and the Yankees two runs, six hits, two errors. Pete Nicholson, the loser, he's now 0 and one. This broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. And any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner of Baseball is prohibited. So I'll speaking now for our air producer, Ken McGregor, for our engineer, George Robinson, for our Kurt Gowdy, this is Harry Carey, reminding you to be sure to tune in Wednesday at 
1.45 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time for the sixth game of this exciting 1964 World Series. When your host, as today, again will be Gillette, the people who know men best, and Chrysler Corporation, maker of Plymouth, Dodge, Dodge Trucks, Chrysler, and Imperial. This is... This is KMOX and KMOX FM Radio, the World Series Voice of St. Louis. Flavor, for the fun of it, flavor, wherever you go, drink up. Push the butter in the beer you ought to get to know. Flavor you ought to get to know, a tall glass of cold, refreshing Bush Bavarian beer. Enjoy one soon. Flavor for the fun of it, Bush Bavarian beer. Eight million folks enjoy them most. They go three A from coast to coast. We worry not. We have a way. All we say is A A A. 